So, so we were um, working with our franchise, Yum Restaurants, who owns the KFC brand in, in, uh, globally, uh, based out of Johannesburg, who KFC Africa. Um, and uh, we're a, KFC, a local KFC franchisee in South Africa. We've got 12 restaurants in the Eastern Cape. Okay. And uh, we've been wanting to grow our reach outside of the South African border. And, and even in, in South Africa, we are still growing our portfolio there. Um, and uh, we've been in touch with our... Uh, Yama has been working closely with us and put us in touch with Vivo Energy, which is a, a large fuel um, operation throughout the African continent, uh, who manages the Shell brand. So um, it just makes sense for us to open as many KFCs as we can on KFC, on Shell forecourts um, and bring it KFC closer to our customers. Um, so our introductions with Vivo uh, and Shell have been fantastic and uh, we went around the, the continent looking at different uh, countries where, where KFC already is and where we can open new markets for KFC. And uh, I, I was blown away last February when I visited Cote d'Ivoire uh, and Abidjan and just the huge amount of potential that was available for us. And so we'll be uh, the first KFC to open in Abidjan uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, we're very excited about it. Um, and it'll be um, the first KFC to open outside in Africa for the first couple of years. So, um, you know, KFC Africa is wanting to, we want to grow our brand throughout the continent. And I think having a good presence here in Abidjan, in, in Cote d'Ivoire, is um, a good thing for us. And now, what is it that made um, Cote d'Ivoire attractive to you? Because, I mean, for me, coming here, my first time, I've been to other African countries, I was really blown away. Just literally when you land, you feel like there is something special. Definitely. For you, what was yeah. it? Because you said your first trip was here in February. What, what made this I think special? it has to be, and it's quite an easy answer, is the people mm. and the energy about the place. Um, where, as you say, when you land and you, you, you come out of uh, arrivals, you can just feel it. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely a... A, a need and a, and a desire of this of, of people of Cote d'Ivoire to just grow their economy and the, uh, and and we, so we really want to be part of that. I mean, why would you not want to be yes. part of it? Um, and with our great our great brand and our partnership with Vivo, um, KFC and Vivo, I think it's just a it's just a no brainer for us to, to get into to Abidjan and, and the Cote d'Ivoire market. And I'll, is it important as a South African business um, businessman to get into part, if you're going to do business in Cote d'Ivoire? I mean, is it important to yeah, partner with yes. a local um, with a local partner? Is that how the best way I, to go about? I, I think, without a doubt, yeah. um, it's been a strategic decision on, from our side is to partner with locals, mm -hmm. um, with local, and, and and obviously with a large uh, organisation like Vivo, it makes it a lot easier. But I don't think I would do it without partnering with, with someone local. I think it's just the right thing to do, not from a, just from a shielding point of view, but also from a supply chain point of view, to localise as much as you can. I think it's, it's critical uh, in the sustainability and, and just to limit a lot of the risk of entering new markets. I don't, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. It's always good to have local knowledge. and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And now, um, when when I've seen KFC in Nigeria and such, I've yes. seen they have moi moi, which is like this amazing bean, uh, traditional food. You yes. know, they have plantain yes. and all the rest. Yes. Will you be doing a lot of localization in Cote d'Ivoire? And what foods will you be including? Well, I think um, if we look at our existing supply uh, or products, um, uh, our biggest one by far is chicken. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, it has to be world class yes. poultry. And and we're we're so excited because in Cote d'Ivoire. We actually have a world-class supplier who's meeting all our standards that are extremely high standards. So yeah, we're very, very excited that we'll have local poultry supply um, with our partners here in, in Cote d'Ivoire. So yes, that's a big one. Um, a lot of our other products will still have to be imported as the market develops and the supply chain becomes a bit more sophisticated to meet our high world-class standards. But uh, I think the big one was, was poultry. and. Uh, We've ticked That's that really box, good. and yeah. and now we will start um, working with our local partners to develop local product, yes. being the plantain in that. But for now, we're opening just with our original recipe chicken, mm -hmm. hot and crispy chicken, um, with normal French fries, um, and we'll grow our menu as we settle into the market. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yes. And what are some of the nuances of doing business in Cote d'Ivoire um, that is, makes it different from doing business in South Africa, for example? There are differences, obviously. The, the number one biggest one is the language is different. Yes. Uh, we're now dealing with French and not English. Um, so that is definitely a, um, I wouldn't say a hindrance, but it is, it, 
especially with regard to legal documents, for instance. You know, they have to be in French, so that can be tricky. Um, but generally, I found the business environment to be very opening, open, welcoming. Um, the um, with regard to company registrations, tax authorities, so far um, we found it. Well, we, we're going to open in, in a few weeks, so within 12 months we've managed to set up our operations. So I, I don't think uh, uh, I don't think it's been too difficult. Um, but operating in any country outside of our South African borders comes with its challenges. But I would say um, either the language and also importing product yes. uh, cross borders, leaving South Africa or wherever or we're sourcing from all over the world, can be tricky, uh, and we're learning. Um, but I think it's a global, global issue there.